there's a lot of areas that we can play in, a lot of ponds we can play in. Another example, I ran into a guy uh, through someone I helped bring into the profession. He, he was at a uh, telecom. His job was doing projections for a telecom. And telecom was going down, he was worried about his career. So as a fallback, he started taking actuarial exams, just as a second career. But he noticed from the actuarial exams that he had a technique to use in his job. So he asked his boss, hey, do you mind if I uh, use this projection technique? And he said, I don't, I don't mind, I've never heard of that, why don't you try it? And he did, and he was very successful. He became quite famous in his role, so his job became very solid. He still went ahead and finished his associateship, but it just, you know, if he could find that application of actual science, why can't we? So I think if we just look at different opportunities, both inside and outside, you know, to broader financial services, we'll, we'll have a lot of opportunities to play differently. Non-traditional ways would be, for example, working with banks and mutual funds uh, in merger acquisition transactions, where we're using essentially actuarial skills to value those organizations, to value the value of a fund, to value the cash flows and profits in the bank, but we're using actuarial techniques to do that. If you have a look at the, the issues that society faces in terms of the aging of the population, if you look at climate change, all of these issues are going to impact very much on core skills of the profession. For years, I've had junior actuaries come to me, and I've also, as a junior actuary, have asked the question, well, what about national health insurance? Am I still going to have a job? And I'm convinced that this is the Actuarial Opportunity Act, because what will happen is we will need to help even more, because we need to continue to help people find out what the answers are for these situations, as they're extremely complex. The actuary is very involved in the heart of the business, and if you compare that to healthcare economists, they tend to work in universities and don't have the very practical experience that the actuary gets through on-the-job training, usually at an insurance company or, or a consulting firm, particularly in health insurance. ERM is a huge opportunity for us to broaden the spectrum and the acceptance of the actuaries to both the senior executives in the company as well as to other professions outside the actual profession, really by being able to combine the actuarial and analytical skills with the business development skills and say, okay, how do you use those quantitative techniques in a business sense in guiding the company, in better managing the company, which does require overall an improvement in the level and quality of communication that typically actuaries have been used to do. Actuaries are becoming much more used to communicating complex business issues to senior management in a way that they can understand. It's not just about number crunching, it's about translating those results into actionable items. And in fact, I was moderating a session this morning at the ERM Symposium where we clearly went through a process of saying, here's some of the analysis, but here's how you have to communicate it to senior management. And that makes a big difference. I think those communication skills are important from the moment you start working. Um, it, we are all too connected these days. There's nothing that you do that you can do, you know, with your with your computer on your desk and, and just interact with your computer. You're, you are constantly acting with other people through email, through phone calls, through through meetings, uh, and you have to be able to communicate what you've done or what you've done it, is worthless. When I first started off, we were basically multiplying numbers together and helping identify what the cost of health care for an, some absurd benefit level. And today, what I'm doing is I'm actually sitting down and helping people change strategy. It may be helping a hospital contract for their transplant services. It may be helping a health plan uh, decide what they should do strategically. And so the scope of what I'm doing today is far more reaching. It's impacting uh, the uh, all aspects of the clients that I'm working with and frequently I'm working with senior executives in the C-suite and as a result of that I am actually influencing how some of those organizations behave and act in the marketplace.